Hello friends, welcome to ASLP Club. Here we are again to give you some information on very basic yet worth reminding points on the topic of otoscopy, which is a very initial procedure in audiology field. We will be talking on otoscopy procedure, its instruments, tools, some important pointers while performing otoscopy, its importance and use and also abnormal and normal findings. So, directly starting on the topic, what is otoscopy? Otoscopy is a clinical procedure used to examine structures of the ear, particularly the external auditory canal, tympanic membrane and middle ear with the help of an instrument called otoscope. So, in more simpler terms, with the use of simple device called otoscope, the healthcare provider that is usually an audiologist or ENT examines ears and its structures by simply viewing and observing with the help of otoscope. Otoscopy is done before performing detailed hearing tests and routine evaluation of specific ear complaints. This procedure is done mostly by ENTs and audiologists. Now before moving on to the topics like instrumentation, how otoscope is performed and other topics, it is more important to tell you why otoscopy is done and why it is important. Otoscopy plays a significant role in the diagnosis of several ear conditions and is a key step for the diagnosis of some conditions such as acute otitis media, traumatic perforation of the tympanic membrane cholesteatoma and more. So now let me show you how an otoscope look. This is an otoscope. There are many types of otoscope but most commonly used otoscopes consists of a handle and a head. The otoscope contains a light and magnifying lens to illuminate and enlarge ear structures to visualize anatomic structures in the ear. As the ear canal is very narrow and it is difficult to view internal structures, health providers use speculum with otoscope. There are often multiple speculum sizes for attachment to the otoscope. So according to the size of the ear canal of the patient, speculum is selected. Basically, otoscope is done with three steps you should remember. That is, observe perform and interpret. First, the examiner introduces him or herself and by the time can also ask few questions about the ear problem like taking history or complaints. While doing so, the examiner should observe the external ear structure and should note if any abnormality is seen. Examine the health of the external ear, the pinna, noting signs such as wounds, scars and inflammation. Next, the examiner can begin the otoscopic exam by explaining what is he or she going to do on patient. Examiner should always ask permission to enter otoscope into the ear of the patient and then proceed with the otoscopic examination. The patient should be seated comfortably and should remain motionless during examination. The patient should be instructed to report immediately when any discomfort or pain is experienced during the examination. Young children may need to be held by an appropriate adult which should be the person responsible for the child. It is usually preferable to examine first the ear least likely to have an observable abnormality. The entire ear canal and tympanic membrane might not be visible at once. It is therefore often necessary to observe different portions of the ear canal and tympanic membrane at different times, such as by gently manipulating and by angling the otoscope. However, it is generally advisable to hold the otoscope like a pen in between the first and second fingers. But no matter how you hold the otoscope, it is necessary to view the ear and its structure with less discomfort to patient and good visualization to examiner via otoscope. 
yes there are some preferences in holding and performing arthroscopy but you can always go with procedure that resolves patient's discomfort and good visualization as the ear canal is not straight and is s shaped the examiner should grasp the patient's pinna and pull upward and backward in cases of adults while in cases of children the examiner should pull the pinna downward and backward this step will facilitate visualization of tympanic membrane next the examiner can gently insert the speculum into the patient's external auditory canal the examiner should inspect the health of the external auditory canal and evaluate factors such as presence of inflammation discharge cerumen and infection the examiner should then slowly progress the speculum into the canal until the tympanic membrane becomes visible the examiner should evaluate the health of the tympanic membrane and observe for factors such as color presence of perforation bulging appearance and also observe tympanic membrane landmarks including the pars flaccida on the superior aspect of the tympanic membrane the pars tensa on the posterior aspect the cone of light on the inferior and anterior aspect and the handle of malleus on the anterior aspect observation of tympanic membrane landmarks can help the examiner evaluate the health of the middle ear following the inspection of tympanic membrane the examiner can slowly remove the otoscope from the patient's auditory canal lastly the examiner should note his or her interpretations this was how otoscopy exam is done one difficult part for examiner is to make out the observations while seeing the structures via otoscope so while performing otoscopy what observations should be made part wise is discussed further inspect the external auditory canal some hair often with yellow to brown cerumen evaluate tympanic membrane note the color whether it's red white yellow translucency if it's transparent to opaque and position of the drum whether it's retracted neutral or bulging identify the pars tensa with its cone of light the handle and short process of malleus and the anterior and posterior folds of the pars flaccida and the position of malleus handle malleus lies in oblique position behind the upper part of drum but in normal findings of otoscopy the expected results you see in auditory canal has some hair often with yellow to brown cerumen and ear drum is pinkish gray in color translucent and in neutral position malleus lies in oblique position behind the upper part of the drum now let me show you some abnormal findings when inspecting external auditory canal if there is tenderness on pulling auricle or canal is swollen narrowed moist with pus it can be a condition named otitis externa in acute otitis externa the skin of the ear canal is painful infected and swollen and it may be impossible to visualize the tympanic membrane if there is yellow to brown sticky to hard cerumen and is obscuring drum that is ear wax or foreign body in the canal examiner should give the referral for wax removal probably to an ent If there is an absent or partial pinna or canal it is a birth condition called microtia or anosia or atresia coming to observe abnormalities in eardrum eardrum is probably abnormal if the color of the eardrum is red and has loss of landmarks that is indicative of acute otitis media bulging of the eardrum is indicative of acute otitis media retracted ear is indicative of tympanosclerosis hole in the tympanic membrane is abnormal and is called perforation 
cholesteatoma that is an abnormal non cancerous skin growth that develop in ear can cause middle ear infections these were the abnormalities that you may see when doing otoscopic examination so i now explained all the things to keep in mind while performing otoscopy theory as well as practical part still here are few careful and cautious pointers that you can register and and avoid injury or default results in otoscopic examinations this type of ear examination is simple and generally harmless caution should always be used any time an object is inserted into the ear this process can irritate an infected external ear canal and can rupture an eardrum if performed improperly or if the patient moves suddenly or examiner is not steady or is pushed while performing otoscopy though can cause serious harm to subject if an object lodged in the ear is what is causing discomfort pushing in the otoscope without checking first may result in the object being pushed further into the ear possibly causing damage to the eardrum or further irritating the ear canal so check the ear of the patient listen for the patient's complaint try putting the otoscope gradually into the ear while looking through also take care you do not shake or get hit by someone while performing the otoscopy wash your hands and wear surgical masks for otoscopic examinations also clean the speculum before and after the use as the infection of one patient can infect others that was all on otoscopy i hope you could make use of the information provided please like and share our video and don't forget to subscribe thank you for watching